Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today we're going to take a look at a basic combat tutorial. Please check out the basic flight tutorial if you haven't already. And if you don't know what Star Citizen is or how to get a ship, check the description for earlier tutorials and guides. We're going to jump straight into Vandal Swarm to learn the basics of combat. So you want to click on Electronic Access in the Options. You want to click on Arena Commander. You want to click on Drone Sim. Uh, and then you want to select here Vandal Swarm. We're going to go on Dying Star because it's my favouritest map. And we're going to use a uh, one of our ships. What ship are we going to use today? I'm going to use an Aurora LN, um, but use whatever ship that you have. Oh, yeah. Bam. I'm going to use that because it has missiles. And uh, even if your ship doesn't have missiles, I at least want to show you them in the tutorial. And when we're ready, we click Launch. Welcome to Robert Space Industries. Enjoy the ride. System check. Vandal Swarm initiated. So, there are some things to know about Vandal Swarm. It is a simulation, so you don't have to worry about losing your ship or paying out anything, um, ever. So, it's pretty simple. It, Vandal Swarm starts off in waves. So, to start with, you'll want to set up your ship uh, like you want it. Um, in the previous tutorial, I talked about look ahead mode, uh, as well as relative or interactive mode. Get your ship set up how you like it with the safeties and everything like that as well. So I'm going to turn mine into relative mode, and I'm going to turn off look ahead mode. There we go. So now I am ready for combat. And there are ships around. Uh, I've got wingmen as well. So you've got two wingmen to assist you in Vandal Swarm in Drone Sim. Uh, if you played multiplayer, you'd have up to three other players assisting you. They are friendly and can be shot at by you. So friendly fire is on. So the basics of combat are press T to select the nearest enemy. You can then cycle hostile targets with Y. Um, so cycle through. But you want to press T again. Uh, and we're going to go for our nearest target to us. We will see on the HUD that the target that we've got is selected. And if we weren't facing our target, an arrow to our target would appear. Showing us which are, where our target is on our screen. Let's go fly to him. We also have a radar there. You can see the um, it draws up or down based on where the target is. The more experience uh, you have, the better you'll, you'll learn how the radar works. But we're going to kill this target first. So left click... We'll fire our weapon group 1, and right click will fire our weapon group 2. We can also press M to match speed of the target, which is useful. Um, I'm going to fire my weapon group 1 and 2 at this target and kill it. Nice and simple. That vandal is dead. What you want to do is you just want to kill the other vandal um, using the steps we've learned so far. Testing weapons out at different ranges. Just kill this wave at your own pace. Oh, come here. There we go. All the Vandal down. Nice and easy, nice and simple. Uh, you might find that a bit more difficult if you have no aiming practice. Because, you know, game is hard. <laughs> um, so, one of the other things to know is pips. So, pips are drawn from the, your weapon, effectively. Um, and they tell you where to shoot. So, I can't just shoot in the middle of my screen and hope to hit a target. I'm shooting at the other reticle. Which is telling me where to fire. So if I just if I try and shoot this with the center of my screen, I'm going to miss him. But if I shoot at the reticle that's drawn from my weapons, I will hit my target. Now the other thing I suppose we should learn here is how to fire missiles. So we'll talk about signatures in a second. But if I press middle mouse and I have any missiles... Uh, I will lock a missile on to my tar current target. Now, he's being evasive, the tricksy little hobbits is. I don't want him to be evasive. I want to launch a missile, and I do that when it's fully locked by holding middle mouse. And we'll see the joy of a missile launched and destroying the target. Now, I do advise people changing that key because it's actually quite annoying and gets in the way of your uh, normal fire. You can also turn off that cinematic missile mode as well because, you know, you might not want to watch your missiles fly into the target while you're flying in a space melee. Let's just kill the rest of these, clear this wave, and then we will talk about some more bits and bobs. So every three waves in Vandal Swarm as well, you'll get an elite. 
Now, hopefully they'll launch some missiles at me. So what we're going to do here is we're going to learn a little bit about countermeasures. If you want to change what countermeasure you're using, and you can see this at the bottom right. Oh, fantastic. You can press G. If you hold G, you will fire the selected countermeasure. So you can see here I'm firing off a volley of countermeasures. Um, keep on changing what I'm firing. Although it does tell you what type of missile is on your tail. So in that particular situation, I should have used an IR or flare. Um, an IR missile was on me because you can see that little flame symbol. So I should have used a flare. Now, so this is the elite here, the little king. Now you just need to be wary of these targets. You do get a refill of all ballistic weapons and missiles at the end of um, wave three. So you can just spam away with missiles if you want to. I've disabled him now. I think he's pretty dead. You can see at the bottom as well your kill feed and points feed. It will tell you if you've done actual physical damage to a target uh, and um, if that target is also dead. Uh, I'm actually dry on missiles now, but at the end of this wave I will get them all back. So what you want to do now really is just kind of kill all the targets, get kind of comfortable. If you die, you've only got three lives, um, you can just respawn on those lives, but then when you die the battle swarm will be over, and you can just restart effectively. So, the other thing to learn is boost and afterburner. Just above the throttle, so let me move the throttle up and down. Um, you can see am I coupled? No, that's, that's recoupled. Uh, you can see my throttle here, moving up and down. Just above that, there's another bar, which is my boost fuel. So if I hold shift, I boost. That will enable me to basically turn more effectively and um, stop more effectively. So if I hold back on the throttle or I use space break with X and press shift, then I will space break effectively more quickly. Um, so this is really useful for turning. If, however, I want to use afterburner, I would tap shift and then hold. So bam, bam. I will then be able to travel faster than my normal top speed. So that's for very, for, for traveling faster effectively. That's that form of afterburner rather than boost. They are different and they serve different purposes. One would be for catching targets or getting away from targets. That's why I use the afterburner. Uh, the other one is for basically quick agility. And um, that's the boost, just holding shift. You kind of just want to use the tips and tricks that I've just said uh, to clear wave three. Um, if you've already cleared wave three by the time you've got to this bit, uh, then clear wave six. Hmm? Yeah. How do you like that? Let's just clear these guys nice and quick. And you'll see that your weapons can overheat. In the bottom left, I've overheated my bulldogs. Uh, and I started to overheat my laser cans. You can also see a percentage bar ticking up. That's the amount of power. So the lower it gets, the more power has been used and it takes a while to charge up. So if that got to zero, I wouldn't be able to fire anymore because effectively the item doesn't have any power and it's not receiving power quick enough for my power plants. Something quite good to know is energy versus ballistic weapons. So energy weapons basically draw energy straight from your ship. They cost more power to use whereas ballistic weapons have ammo which needs to be filled um, and that's quite important because you can run out of ammo I suppose you can run out of power as well uh, both require some form of management uh, the other thing that requires management is your shields now you can manage all of your systems on your ship but shield management is what we're going to talk about for the purposes of this tutorial uh, and we will cover the others and more advanced system management later. Uh, if you just use your numpad, um, 4, 8, 6 and 2, so 8 would put shields to the front. Um, you can see that little little cross there showing me where my shields are going. I only have front and back shields with this ship. Basically you can have uh, two quadrant or four quadrant shields. Uh, with this it's two quadrant, so front and back covering my whole ship. So if I had someone on my tail, I'd want to press 2 and get those shields on my back. If I had someone uh, coming straight at me and my shields were weak there, I'd want to press 8 and have my shields more in the front of my ship. And I want to avoid crashing into the simulation boundary, which would kill me. But that's basically all the basics that you need of combat. Uh, you want to play some Vandal Swarm a few times. Uh, you want to get a good 
at seeing how far you can get uh, with your lives. Uh, but in the future, we need to outfit our ships. Uh, we possibly need to change our ships with wreck. Uh, and we need to get our configuration of our ships and all that sort of stuff set up so that we are much better at Vandal Swarm. That said, the Aurora LN, which I'm using, is a fantastic combat starter ship, and I love it. And this is it. This is its stock, total stock build, and it is pretty cool. Anyway, guys, yeah, that's the basics of combat. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help me. Please check out our other tutorials. Uh, and next time, we will look at some more advanced stuff in the mini persistent universe, Port Olisar, where we'll learn how quantum travel works, points of interest work, and probably outfitting your character.